My name is Mike, and this message goes out to all who happen to follow me online. In my time here on Reddit, I have enjoyed countless ghost stories about haunted houses and so forth. That's all they ever were though, just stories. My mother passed away recently, and while some of my relatives and I were cleaning out her attic, I came across an old journal, and I wished that I hadn't. What happened all those years ago? It all came flooding back through the dusty weathered pages of an old notebook. The memories of so long ago were dead and buried, and I would have preferred they stayed that way. It was around 20 years ago now. I was only a summer away from putting the whole North American landmass between me and my podunk little town. The Starlight Resort, a quaint hotel in my town, popular with honeymooners, looking for a romantic getaway and old-timey colonial experience, was the perfect opportunity for me to save up the last little bit of money I could before school started. I primarily worked at the front desk for the night shift. Getting a job there was a breeze. Apart from a couple of regulars, staff changed frequently. Unfortunately, being short-staffed so often required me to step outside of my immediate duties at times. I do remember there was a security guard who quit after only a day. It has been said that a lot of people who have tried to work there in the past have never gone more than four or five days without quitting. Little did I know that I would soon find out why. Anyway, this is where my journal comes into play. In my day, we didn't hop on our cell phones and pointlessly update the world on every mundane aspect of our lives. If you were working late and you were bored, you had a couple of options. A. Be a normal human being and socialize with your coworkers. B. Get a deck of cards and kick your own ass in a game of solitaire. Or C. Make your own entertainment, which in my case was journaling. In high school, English was my best subject and I had planned on majoring in it in college. To either go into teaching or journalism or something of the sort, so I was no stranger to jotting down my thoughts and feelings. At this point in my life, writing came second nature, and it was the best therapy that money didn't have to buy. A notebook doesn't lie or misinterpret, it only presents your thoughts, your feelings, and experiences as you dictate them. I used to write and sometimes even just doodle if it ever got slow enough where I wasn't constantly busy. I knew of the hotel's supposed hauntings, and figured it might be fun to jot down some notes if I ever saw or felt anything out of the ordinary. At the time, the most I thought was ever going to come from it were a few instances of cold drafts and some flickering lights. Attached below is a previously unobserved glimpse into the nightmares I experienced while working at the resort. It was not unusual for me to jot things down, at least twice a night once before I started a shift, and once more after I got on break. To make things easier to read, I split up my writings into two separate parts per entry. June 21st, 1999. Who would have thought I'd wind up here at the Starlight Hotel? I'm sitting in the lobby as I write this. The history of this place still seems to live through the atmosphere here floating through the musty air and embedded into handcrafted mahogany furniture. And it seems like the stories about this place go back as far as the hotel itself. Kevin Mackinson from gym class used to always talk about the lady in red. A long time ago, farther and farther back depending on who you ask, a bride committed suicide on the night of her wedding. The story goes that a young bride having her wedding here in the reception lounge jumped off the top floor of the hotel after discovering her new husband was having an affair. Legend has it that she can still be seen wandering the top floor all hours of the night, her face and dress covered in blood and broken bones from the impact of the fall. I guess that's where the red comes from. Ah, to be a young little freshman again. Seems like every town has their own story about a ghost bride. I can't believe people still fall for that one anymore. It does have me thinking, though. All these rumors floating around about this place, even if they are fake, the stories themselves have to be based on something. Maybe there's no ghost. 
but you never know. Affairs destroy marriages every day, and as unfortunate as it is, it is history. Piecing together the secrets of the Starlight Hotel might be fun. Well, I must take off for now. My shift is starting, and Mr. Gilbert, the boss, needs me. June 21st, continued. Okay, so that was odd. Time is 12.38 a.m. It was about 20 minutes ago when it first happened. But this is the first moment's reprieve I've gotten. I want to get this out while it's as fresh in my mind as can be. I was delivering some miscellaneous things to a couple of rooms on the top floor. It was just my luck that the elevator happens to be out of service, so I've been getting my exercise in the exit stairwell. The cold hard metal from the hand railing was at war with the fire burning in my lungs from the physical activity. I had reached the top floor and headed for the door when a thunderous bang sent me soaring out of my skin. On the opposite end of the door, gazing through the door's window, looking square at me was an unbelievably whitish young woman. Her face was shrouded in crimson, sandy blood. She screeched in pain. Open the door. Get in here now. Blood on her hands writhed as she slammed on the door, commanding my attention. I don't know what came over me, but the next thing I knew my hand was hugging the handle and welcoming her into my space. She clutched onto me and started smearing blood all over my clothes as she whimpered in my ear. Where the hell have you been? Frozen in fear and unable to answer. A second question came forth. Are these my towels? It was then that I remembered room 1307's request. One of the reasons I had been sent up there in the first place. Damn it, the woman complained. It's been almost 10 minutes now. She grasped a stack of towels and pressed them against her nose. The poor woman was taking a bath and went to wash her hair and smashed her face on the faucet. Talk about a jolt to the system. That was an image I won't soon forget. I am finally back at the front desk now. It took forever to talk to the woman and fill out an incident report. Okay, so it wasn't the lady in red. But it was a lady in red. Does that count for anything? June 22nd. Night two, here's to you. And here's to an incident-free night. No more bloody noses from here on out. So far, things have been quiet. Quieter, anyway. I have company tonight. Someone else is on duty with me. Her name is Vivian. Could have used her help last night, but she mentioned something about her kid being sick with a cold. Or her son, I think and not being able to get the babysitter. You should have heard Mr. Gilbert when he showed up. I don't know how this chick put up with this abuse. It's one thing to reprimand an employee for being late or not calling into work, but he was flat out berating her and bellowing at her like she was only a small child. He kept going on about how she needed to take accountability, that she was still just a child with a child of her own. She must really need this job if she's putting up with that garbage. Here she comes now. She must have been in the bathroom for half an hour. I think she was crying. Anyway, still nothing crazy to report tonight. At least nothing as crazy as last night. It's probably silly for me to even bring this up, but I just can't get it out of my mind. I was ready to write the whole thing off myself until guests started calling in and complaining. It sounded like moaning. I had noticed it earlier when I was running some things up to the second floor. Looking at the manifesto, and judging by the rooms calling in, I would say it's coming from room 209. It's the only room on the floor that hasn't called complaining. The only problem is, room 209 hasn't been occupied in weeks according to the records. There's a lot of secrets in room 209. That phrase is giving me the chills right now. That one used to spread like the plague up and down my school's cafeteria. The story would be almost completely different by the time it made its way around the room, though. When I saw that room 209 was empty, my heart nearly sank as the various stories came flooding back to me. The sound coming from the room right now, though, reminds me of one particular tale. It was the early 1900s. A young woman from a multitude of places, depending on who you hear the story from, immigrated to America to start a life of freedom and opportunity with her sweetheart. The significant other came over first and got a job in a steel mill to pay for her passage over. 
After arriving here and settling in room 209, she learned that he was tragically killed when a fire broke out at the mill. Upon learning of his death, the woman became despondent and barricaded herself in the room. Hotel staff tried everything they could, but were unable to enter the room. For ten whole days, the woman sat in the room bawling her eyes out until finally succumbing to starvation and dehydration. When the staff finally managed to get through the door, her lifeless body was discovered on the bed. She was still clutching a pillow to her chest. Is this what I'm hearing right now? The mournful sobs of a grieving widow? We'll leave it to Vivian to head off to the bathroom again right now. I'd give up my week's paycheck to have anyone else go up there with me and check it out. I don't want to go alone. When housekeeping goes in there to just clean the room, they do it in shifts, never going alone. They are always in and out, no messing around. What am I going to do? I'm just one man. The new guy. Unfortunately, I'm not really in any position to say no. So here goes nothing. I'll have to be as quick as the maids. With any luck, I should be back before the ink on this paper dries. June 22nd continued. Damn it. I knew I shouldn't have gone up there. What am I going to do now? I never dealt with something like this before. That room was completely emaciated. How the hell could that have happened? No one said anything. Not about this. No one should go back into room 209. I got water all over my damned shoes, and I like this pair. Stupid busted pipe. I'm grateful that the damage was minimal at least. Mr. Gilbert had me seal the room up. No one else on the floor reported any issues, and no water got into anyone else's room. That's good news. Mr. Gilbert says that he's going to get some guys to handle it tomorrow. So. I guess I didn't hear the cries of a grieving widow, after all. Just the wailing of a busted water pipe. Perhaps there are a lot of secrets in room 209, but I'll have to wait until the room is repaired again. June 23rd. What fresh hell awaits me tonight? This has been the most stressful couple of days I've ever had. I guess somebody up there is making me work hard for my money. So far. Tonight has been gleefully uneventful, thank God. Maybe I can rest easy and just do an average night's work, knock on wood. Vivian came in a little late tonight, but I don't think Mr. Gilbert noticed this time. When I went to clock in, he reeked of booze. He wasn't too friendly tonight either. When I told him I was here, he just grunted, get to work, and went back to hitting the bottle. I guess managing a hotel isn't an easy business. It takes a mental toll on you. I feel bad for the guy, but he could try to be a little bit more friendly. Off to work I go for now. June 23rd continued. Break time. What a wonderful break time it is. I finally got to do what my original job description entails. Sit at the front desk and answer the phone. I think I'm a little bored tonight. There's no excitement. I managed to get in more than a few words with Vivian tonight. She's a pretty rad chick once you get to know her. She's a little quiet at first, but all in all, a very good listener. Funny thing is, we went to the same school. She's a little older than me. About maybe four years. I think maybe she just graduated before I got there. I figured maybe I would ask her what she's heard about the place. That didn't go quite as well as I had hoped though. She just said that she wasn't much for ghost stories and didn't go into that sort of thing. I figured it might be better to just change the subject. But without thinking, I just blurted out the first thing that entered my mind. How about Mr. Gilbert, huh? He can be a real hard ass sometimes, huh? The air in the room went from warm and inviting to tense and chilly. She glanced down at the floor. What are you going to do? Bosses are crap, am I right? True, I answered back, but I heard the way he speaks to you. Why do you put up with it? If someone gave me crap for taking care of my kid, that would be it. Where else am I gonna go? I'm stuck here. That's all she said. Just like that, no feeling in her voice. 
feel so bad for this poor girl. I can't imagine feeling trapped like that with no way out. It must be hell. There must be something else you can do, I asserted. Why don't you just quit? Would you help me? I didn't quite understand what she meant. Would you help me get out of here? Go find a better place? Um, okay. Isn't this something you can do personally, though? Suddenly, Mr. Gilbert was coming back from whatever he was. That was the end of that. She shushed me and took off for the restroom. She didn't like to be in the same room with him if she could help it. I was surprised he didn't ask what I was up to by myself. He just asked if everything was okay and went back to whatever he was doing. He is in the back office right now. I don't think he was feeling too well. All of his drinking must have finally hit him hard. I haven't heard a peep from him. June 24th. That was fun while it lasted, but wasn't meant to be, I suppose. I guess asking for multiple nights in a row of unvarying work was too much to hope for. Anything that can go wrong, has. I don't know about ghosts. I have yet to see one, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised if there is a hex on this place. Maybe the rumors from school got it all wrong. This place is cursed, not haunted. The kicker was this newlywed couple come running out of the elevator in hysterics. The man was dressed like the sorriest excuse of a police officer I have ever seen. The woman had on a practically see-through nightgown and undergarments of the edible variety. They claimed they were sleeping when the wife slipped out of bed. Her wrist was swollen and gnawed up like chewing gum. Her eye was black as a moonless night. I highly doubt anyone goes to sleep dressed like they were. And who among us who isn't 80 years old bruises up like that from falling a few inches out of bed? Mr. Gilbert barked at me to get upstairs and check out the room as if Vivian and I didn't have enough on our plates. She was busy with the real glamorous work, cleaning up after someone who came in drunk off their ass and couldn't make it into the bathroom. When the newlywed couple and I made it into their room, it was just as I thought. An alien from outer space could deduce that no one had been asleep in this room. The bed looked like a tornado had hit it. Sheets were wet and stained by the complimentary bottle of champagne given out to the newly arrived happy couples, and a small dent lay embedded in the ceiling with bits of plaster trickling down. My guess was from popping the cork. I sighed as I held out my clipboard and started filling out the incident report. Okay, I asked. Do you guys want to tell me one more time what happened here? I told you. We were... Yeah, yeah, I know. Sleeping. I interjected as I finished filling out the report. To tell you the truth, I'd rather not even know. I continued. Thanks for giving us your contact information. A hotel representative will be in touch with you guys in a couple of days. I turned out of the room and didn't look back. Who knows what I might have seen if I had looked more thoroughly. After winding around a few turns of the cold, narrow, dimly lit hallway, I came upon the elevator. An odd mixture of anxiety and melancholy permeated the air as I waited for the ride down. It was hard to explain, but it was like someone was waiting with me for the elevator. Like a presence that just wanted company and didn't want to be alone. It didn't feel threatening, but it would have creeped me out a lot less if they tried to give me some sort of sign instead of just being present. I recoiled in shock when the long standing elevator door skidded open. Boo! Vivian sprang forward from the inside and took small calculated steps towards me. This wearisome attempt of playfulness was uncalled for. There is a time and place for this sort of thing, and I'd rather not have the daylight scared out of me in the middle of a busy shift. Jeez, Vivian, you scared me half to death, I protested. I've been looking for you, what's going on? Uh, what hasn't been going on? I complained. I just got through with another incident report. How about you? How are things downstairs? That's actually what I wanted to ask you, she explained. Do you know where Mr. Gilbert is? I was looking all over for him. Phones were ringing in the lobby and neither you or him were there. Oh, great. 
She just left the phones ringing to come find me. Mr. Gilbert was gonna be pissed. As much as I don't like his personality sometimes, I can kinda understand where his hostility comes from. Vivian is a great chick, but she has a real knack for not getting anything accomplished. I don't know. She, he told me to come up here and I've been busy dealing with the wacky honeymooners from hell ever since. I massaged my weary, weighty eyelids and thought harder. I think he was heading towards the kitchen the last time I heard. I think a chef cut their finger on a knife or something, and now they've got a big problem. This night has been hell. She looked me dead in the face. It was the first time we locked eyes. I never noticed how beautiful they were before. Like a painting. One that had faded over the years and didn't have that look anymore. These were the eyes of an old soul. You're right, she said. I know. Now we gotta get back downstairs before Mr. Gilbert has it in for us both. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, you were right before. It's time I go somewhere else. Find someplace better. It's time he knows. She couldn't possibly be serious. She had to pick tonight of all nights to quit? Damn it. I'm sorry, but this time I'm with Mr. Gilbert. Take some responsibilities and don't just quit and leave everyone else hanging. What's she thinking? June 24th continued. Vivian is gone now. I haven't seen her since the elevator. I guess she left now. I haven't seen Mr. Gilbert for a while. I checked the kitchen, thinking maybe he still hadn't wrapped things up over there. The light was on and the freezer was open a crack. That's about it. Closed up and shut everything down in there for him. He'd kill me if I let the food go bad, if he had the energy to after killing Vivian for her abrupt exit. On one hand, I am pissed that she just took off and left me. But on the other hand, I'm kinda glad I inspired her to move on in life. Well. Another day, another dollar. I'll miss you, Vivian. It was nice getting to know you. June 25th. Some slight background information. This particular entry had to be logged on separate paper when I originally hand wrote it. After you read it, you'll understand why. Oh my god, what have I done? There was no one there. I didn't hear anything. Not a peep. How didn't I see anything? There was a horrible accident. I showed up to work today and a different manager was there. Mr. Gilbert was found dead this morning, frozen to death after being locked in the freezer. I've been at the police station from 9 o'clock this morning until about 8.30 p.m. since I was the only one at the front desk on duty when it happened. They had a flurry of questions for me. A note was found left behind at the hotel addressed to me. I must have never seen it that night. To this very day, the note she left behind still gives me chills. No pun intended. The original note was kept for evidence. I'm grateful that I had the foresight to make a copy of it before it was taken away from me. It read, There once was a woman trapped in a freezer. Ignoring her pleas, he did not release her. Growing colder and colder, she could see her breath and died a slow and icy death. Despite his crime of ignorance, he had no shame. He will only learn if his fate is the same. The sins of our father must be repaid. Do your research and you will find your proof, convicting the one who was ever aloof. You looked upon my situation with much pity, and now I've found a way for you to help me. Trust what I say and do not bat an eye. This man is certainly not a good guy. You must strike now. It is prime time. Hurry and return to the scene of the crime. There is only so much I can do, and the rest is to fall upon you. He will beg and plead and scream and shout, but you mustn't ever let him out. Congratulations, Mike. You spent your time here investigating legends. Now you have the honor of being a part of a real one. Thanks for sticking around as long as you did. No one else ever would. Vivian Gilbert. That was the first time I had ever heard her last name. I had no clue she was Mr. Gilbert's daughter. What the police told me next really threw me for a loop. They were insistent the note couldn't have come from her, because she had been dead for the previous ten years at that time. 
She and her unborn baby boy froze to death after she had wandered, I just use the term wandered loosely, into the freezer. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She couldn't have been dead. I'm 99% sure I heard Mr. Gilbert talking to her. It was all a bad dream. It had to be, but I wasn't waking up. The police took handwriting samples and they were able to determine it wasn't me who wrote the note. So there was someone else in the hotel lobby besides me? Who was it really though? End of journal entries. I never returned to work after that. The police interviewed everyone as they possibly could. Other hotel guests, staff members for other shifts, but nothing ever panned out. Most of the security footage was mysteriously never captured from that evening. Just a small portion of Mr. Gilbert staggering into the freezer and me nonchalantly closing it up. His death would go down on to be ruled accidental and I would be cleared of any wrongdoing. Some of the security footage from other nights would go on to be reviewed, but never revealed anything new. I could always be seen talking to someone who was just out of the frame of the camera. In case you were wondering, I did look her up as the note suggested. The first thing that the computer spit back out at me was an old news article about a young pregnant woman found dead after a suspicious accident in the Starlight Hotel. There was even a picture attached. Distressing as it may be, I recognized the person in the photo all too well and I think inadvertently helped her condemn her father to the same fate that she had suffered by his hand.